My name is Maeve Heaney from ACU, the Faculty of Theology and Philosophy, and I'm joining Archbishop Mark Coleridge and Tom, Father Tom Ehrlich from uh, Liturgy Brisbane. And we're talking about art, religious art, its theology, its meaning, how it, um, how it affects us, how it helps us. Um, and today, uh, the painting that I have chosen is one called The Good Samaritan, and it is by Olga Baktina. Olga is a local artist born in Russia. She also lived for quite a few years in the Middle East, uh, which she says marked her a lot, um, and is very active in the um, art world here. Uh, this painting, in fact, won the Cossack, 2016 Cossack Prize at the Cathedral of St. Stephen's. Um, and as you can see, she says she's, she's influenced by different forms of art, but one of the strongest is the Fauvist movement. So Matisse, Derain, um, Montiglioni, uh, and you can see that in this mm. painting. Um, and what I love about, well, there's many things I love about this painting, but, but the first one is just that, the bold colors and the broad strokes, the passion with which there is painting and how she describes her own painting, but also the artists that influence her. Um, and one of the things I have to say, she also does landscapes actually, but this one isn't obviously, it has a scene. But I love the way the humanity here is foregrounded. So the scene is there, but, but the figures draw you in. Uh, and it's the humanity of those figures that led me to think about reflecting on this art. Um, the not dead, but obviously asleep and wounded man with his eyes closed. Uh, the compassion and the attentiveness of the one lifting him. Um, and the hands, I mean, the hands are huge, and the feet, but the hands really drew my attention. And I feel, I mean, I don't know, actually, I haven't had a conversation with Olga about what hands mean to her in her art. Uh, that would be a conversation to have. But uh, for me, I think hand and, hands and touch are underestimated. So hands, for me, evoke doing, action, uh, touch. Um, and I think in all the arts, when you think about it, hands are so important. So, so the painting hands, and even as a musician in singing, you watch some singers and they'll mark the melody with, as they sing with mm. their hand because it helps you hit the note properly. So I think hands are underestimated. Um, the other thing is just the compassion. Mm, um, when, when she describes her painting, I'm not sure if she's referring just to this one, but she says uh, one of the messages that, that she's trying to, um, uh, um, if you like, evoke, rather than transmit, I think art evokes, is there is mercy in this beautiful world. Even in the midst of wounds and pain and suffering, there is mercy. Um, and the focus here is definitely on the, uh, the Good Samaritan. It's funny, she also comments, and I had to say I resonated with this, that we think of the Good Samaritan story and you think of the ones that didn't stop, when actually it's about the one that did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she foregrounds the one that did the compassion that's possible. Um, and that is clear here. The other thing um, that struck me, and, and this is just me, when I look at it, I know there's a lot of colors, but the blue for me stands out. Mm. Mm. And blue is a funny color, it's strange. I mean, there's royal blue, but we also say I'm feeling blue, and Beyond Blue is a great name for a charity that deals with depression or that mm. seeks to help the mentally um, um, uh, depressed, which is such a strong issue in our world nowadays. So, so when I think blue, it's it's rich, it's dark as well. So, so it was evoking for me a journey of Easter and of Lent, of, of being capable of looking at suffering, because that's part of the thing of hope, isn't it? Our hope isn't a kind of hope that doesn't look at suffering. Our hope is one that you, you look through into God's goodness, you look through into God's grace. And I just think that this painting does it beautifully. I have to say for me, I know the figure isn't Jesus, but he sort of evokes Jesus. Maybe it's because you think of the, the wounded side there or something. I'd love to see her maybe pull that thread a bit more and, and give us a good Samaritan Christ. Look, I, I think that last point of yours is a very interesting one about this painting. If you look at both of the figures, that they both have a slight look of Jesus about them. And that's been one of the questions about the parable of the good Samaritan, is Jesus the one in the ditch? <laughs> or is Jesus the Good Samaritan? Yeah. Or is Jesus somehow both? And I think she's playing with that a bit. Mm. That, that there, there's something... The other thing that strikes me about the figures is, you said the hands are big, but the figures are inordinately big against the backdrop. And this, I think, is focusing upon the human thing, which is exactly what the parable is about. 
you know, human need matters more than ritual requirements, which is why the others walk by on the other side of the road. So, so, so the, the, the scale of the human figures and their resemblance to Christ himself, I think, points to this, to, to a kind of deep, deep humanism in the painting. And it strikes me too that, that the painting speaks of the transfiguring power of compassion, not just compassion, but compassion as power. Because if you look at the, the, the landscape, it's, it seems to me to evoke Tuscany, and she has been very influenced by Tuscany, in particular the Duomo at Siena. And I think what she's trying to say is that compassion turns the desert to a kind of a garden. And why would you have all this, this water flowing in, in the, this is the, the, the streams of compassion. And as you say, the dominance of blue is striking and it almost becomes to my eye a kind of Marian theme. In other words, the maternal aspect of compassion which applies not just to women, but to the human being. So, so, so the whole thing of the desert, of violence being transfigured by compassion to become the kind of garden that, that she evokes. And, and, and similarly, you've got the blue cloak, it seems to me, the, the, the left hand of the Samaritan, but then what is that other flowing of blue down into the dark blue at the bottom of the painting. Again, it all seems to, to speak of, of a stream in the desert, which is again very biblical. Ezekiel and jo has the, the, the stream flowing through the, the Judean desert down to the, from the temple to the Dead Sea and turning the desert to a garden. So I think there's something of that theme. I, I was struck when, when she commented that she she started with art and came to theology. You know, she, she, she moved from, from religious art, you know, through to, to her, an expression of her own faith. And for, for me, the, the interaction between the subject um, and, and the re purely formal artistic things are, are really quite, uh, quite significant, because a lot of them don't make sense. You know, that blue cloak at the back, mm. you know, how does that work? You know, what, what, it, what is that kind of big blue sash there? You know, like, it's, where, where, where's the rest of the, of the Good Samaritan? Like, he doesn't seem to have legs, you know? Now, none of those things matter because, for me, she's focusing on the formal artistic things. So that the way she's resolved those figures, you know, with the arms, is almost like a mandala. It's kind of an oval shape mm. in, the, in the middle of the painting. And um, with, within that shape, she then plays with the colours, like you, you, you've spoken about the blue, but for me, it's the contrast between the blue and the yellow, yeah. the, the opposites, you know. So, um, <clears throat> um, uh, and then, yeah, so it's, it's a kind of formal, you know, blocking of colour that that enables her to get into the subject, you know. Yeah, I, I um, think you're quite right. I hadn't quite noticed the interplay of what I would call the gold uh, and the blue. But that's very striking. Even if you look at the, 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 um, the dress of the Samaritan figure, mm. it's a golden robe with a blue sash. And, and, and the golden colour seems to me, again, to evoke the desert. That, that's the kind of colour that you find in the Judean desert. So you've got the interplay between that and the blue, which seems to me to evoke water, and these other uh, earthen colours that, that evoke uh, a Tuscan landscape, landscape. And you couldn't imagine a landscape more different from the Judean mm. wilderness mm. than, mm. you know, the gentle rolling hills of Tuscany with the, 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 um, the pines and so on. May, have you talked about, you know, the the background with the Fauvists, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century. Like, she was also influenced by, by Byzantine art in Russia and then by the early Renaissance art, you know, from, from Italy, from Tuscany and so on. So I think that's, that's a little bit the background to the, uh, to the landscape, you know, behind the figure. Um, and, and also the colours and the, the way in which the, the faces are kind of resolved into almost a kind of geometric shape, you know. Um, so I, I think it, it kind of plugs in as well to a, to a much longer tradition of, of religious art. Uh. And it's interesting because when she describes her own process, which may change, but she describes it as working off, um, off the canvas um, quite clearly, creating something, having something quite clear, and then 
working and how it can change, if mm. that makes sense. So mm. I think that in itself as well. Mm. Other painters, I mean, we were talking um, another time about a painter who just starts with the paint and sees she actually doesn't. She thinks, creates, mm. and then allows it to, to expand. Mm. I'm, I'm just struck um, by, by the eyes of the Samaritan too. Where's he looking? Mm, Interestingly, he's not looking at the, the, the victim. Uh, it's almost as if he's uh, looking somewhere else and, and listening for, for another voice. And almost as if in obedience to, shall we say, God, the, the call to compassion. So, so it's a compassion that, that, that implies another presence that overarches all, perhaps. But it is striking that the Samaritan is not looking at the victim, but looking off screen, as it were, mm -hmm. and almost listening for something else. But there is still a, a very strong and intimate connection between the two figures, well, you know. Again, I think the, 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 the yeah. Um, she also is not scared to kind of show the brushwork, you know, which um, becomes even more pronounced in some of her later works, you know, where the, where the brushwork gets even freer. You know, but but here you like you can see the the marks of the of the of the big flat brush. You know, as she kind of puts the colours down, and I think that that kind of helps to draw us into the act of the painter. You know, so like you can you can almost see the painter kind of putting the paint on because you can see the brush strokes. You know, so strongly. So so it enables us to share not only in the artwork, in her artwork, but in her faith. Yeah, you know, as, as, yeah. she, as she's responding to the subject. That is true. And it gives energy to the whole scene. Mm. The other thing that strikes me again, looking at the background, is the sky in one sense is a stormy sky. Mm. But it's as if the storm is passing because the colours, are, the palette is lighter, lower down. So it's as if the storm of violence has come, but the storm of violence is now passing and light comes down th diagonally through the painting, and, and the, the, the banishing of the storm and the coming of the light, in fact, is the compassion at the heart of the painting. And how do you interpret the front? For me, it looks like an abyss. It looks like there's a fallout there, which I just think is interesting in the context of what you're saying as well. It's, yeah, I, it's I, the I... darkest part of the painting. It's. My uh, sense is that she's kind of working with, with shapes and colours and it's more an artistic thing than, than trying to mm -hmm. portray. Well, she, she it, the, the, the same with the, with the purple ribbon there, which is meant to be the road, obviously, but like it, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of... But it, it looks it, more like a river to me. It looks more like a river. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but, but see, I, I imagine, I suppose, without thinking until you pointed it out, that, that darker... Uh, colouring at the bottom right of the painting, in fact, is the ditch, as it were, at the side of the road from which he has, he has raised the victim so that it, it's, it's the dark space of violence from which the victim has been raised. That was my own uh, sense of it, symbolically. Once again, he's not, uh, she's, she's not focusing on the on the, on the blood and gore, you know, it's... Well, in fact, the, the, the victim is in remarkably good shape, given the yeah. bashing, and he's even got his trousers, <laughs> when in fact they would have taken all his clothing, believe me. So... Uh, and, and, and the sash. <laughs> well, again, is it a sash? It looks like it, but I, I, again, if that darker colour at the bottom of the painting is the ditch, the abyss of violence from which the victim has been drawn, this again might be the water of compassion flowing in, into the abyss. I don't mm. know. This is where one can become a little bit midrashic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. But there is a, there's a, for me, there's a lovely kind of serenity and tranquility about the image. Um, it's, it's again has a, has a dignity, you know, that, that transcends, you know, any violence. And if I, I could just, one, if I can just say one of the reasons I picked this is because it is contemporary. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we're often drawn to art that we know or that has resonance or that has already mm. received. But this is someone living and working and moving and breathing. Mm. And we're imagining what she was thinking, her mm. faith. We're drawing a thousand meanings out, some of which may be or may not be in her intention, but that doesn't mean that on the picture and it doesn't mean it doesn't transform us. So it's the power for me of contemporary 
art to awaken in us senses and colours of faith. And yet it's, it's a contemporary work, as you say, and that's important, but clearly drawing upon a, a whole variety of earlier influences in the history of art and so on, and cultural influences, as we've said. Which is a good uh, artistic expression of tradition. Sure. Uh, and I mean, it's a key thing about hermeneutics, isn't it? It's, always, it's almost a kind of three-way interaction between the writer, the text, and the reader, or in this case, the artist, the image, and the viewer. Um, and it has to be a kind of negotiated meaning, you know, between those three. So it's not a matter of what, what did she intend or what no, did, no. you know. Um, we, we, I think everybody can come to a painting like this, you know, and, and draw a, um, a, a new relationship with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm.